Good evening. Welcome to the Human Relations Commission meeting of May 11th. Roll call, Mary. Uh, Commissioner Alassani. Here. 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 Acting Chair Stinger. Here. Councilman. Thank you. Any agenda changes, requests, or deletions? The agenda is in front of us. Any oral communications? I have no cards. Okay. Then we'll move right on to business. The first we've done informally, but I'd like to do it formally to welcome the new Human Relations Commission members. Dipali. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Valerie. I'm, uh, this is my first time uh, volunteering for a position like this, and I look forward to working with you guys. I'm particularly interested in online and uh, cyber stuff and how it impacts uh, people in the city. I think that's a strong asset to bring to our commission. Thank you for doing that. We should also, just for the record, say that uh, Commissioner Alassani is here for a second term. Thank you, thank you. And Commissioner Stephen Lee will join us in June for his first meeting. So we will be a full commission. And I don't know if anybody's watching who submitted an application, but I just would like to thank everybody who submitted applications and took the time for the interviews. We all know what an arduous process it is, and we appreciate all the uh, submissions we receive. Moving on to uh, recommendations to the Finance Committee for the Community Development Block Grant funding. Can you speak to that? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair Stinger and Commissioners. Um, I'm here tonight to give you a brief update on the fiscal year 2017-18 CDBG allocation process. Eloise, if I could yes. just interrupt for a quick second. Sure. Since we have a new member who doesn't know you and hasn't met you, could you both introduce yourself? Oh, so sure. I'm sorry. I, I'm Eloisa Murillo Garcia. I'm the um, I work in the planning department and I'm a senior planner and I oversee the CDBG grant as well as uh, the city's housing programs. And um, I have here Aram Mockbull, and she, she just started with us this week, and she will be assisting me on the CDBG program. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you, um, commissioners, for having me here again. <laughs> um, as you recall, I was here in March um, to discuss the CDBG allocation process. Um, there have been some changes since March, so that's the reason that um, we're here tonight. Um, at the, actually, I'll just give a quick summary just to refresh your memory. Um, so, um, when I was here last, I uh, talked about the estimated funds available. Um, we're still going with these estimates because HUD has not released their allocation yet. So, these are the estimates that we have. Uh, so we have, we've estimated estimated we have approximately eight hundred and forty four thousand dollars to allocate um, to the CDBG programs, um, and this is a, a summary of the public service applications that we received. Um, it has the agency, the program name, the request, uh, the recommendation of the selection committee. And uh, just to give you some context, the last column has the the current year allocation to to give you a sense of what the what they are currently receiving. Can you tell me about the last page? Can you just tell us what page? Are you referring to the spreadsheet on the last page? Oh, the, the yeah, the one on the slide. Sorry. <laughs> In the planning and administration category, uh, there are, are two um, 
to programs. There is uh, Project Sentinel for the Fair Housing Services in the City of Palo Alto for administration. And again, this has the request, the recommendation, and the allocation, the, the current year allocation. For the economic development category, um, this one did change from when I was here in March. As you recall, um, the HRC gave the opportunity to the economic development um, applicants as well as the public facilities applicants to revise their their um, their funding request. So downtown streets did come forward with a revised request. Uh, they increased their request by nineteen thousand dollars. So they are requesting three hundred and thirty six thousand four hundred dollars. And the uh, selection committee recommendation was to to recommend them at that amount. Um, they are currently receiving an allocation of uh, over over two hundred and ninety thousand um, dollars. Public facilities. Um, well, I should say I'm sorry. Public facilities and um, um, housing rehabilitation. So it should have been a slash. I apologize for that. Um, so this is another change from. March. So in March, we had an application from La Comida for a new site. Um, unfortunately, they withdrew their application because they were unable to secure a site. So we went out again to, um, we released the applications again to give others the opportunity to, to apply for those funds. Um, community working groups submitted an application for some rehabilitation work at the Opportunity Center. And in addition, the city of Palo Alto is proposing to implement a minor home repair program as a pilot program. Um, so if, if the funding is approved, um, the city will go out uh, with an RFP. So we would partner with an agency to help us with that. But um, so we do see that as, as a need right now. So we do get calls from people that need some minor home repairs in their homes. Um, and the recommendation is to um, fully fund those two um, those two projects. Or that, that was the recommendation of the selection committee. Um, also, when the selection committee met, um, it was requested that they um, come up with a contingency plan for when the actual funding allocation is known. Um, last time that I was here, the, the um, commission recommended that the selection committee should reconvene if there's a difference of between, of more greater than or less than 3%. But in the interest of time, um, because we need to go to council before their break. So we're scheduled to go to council on June 19th. So um, it was requested that the selection committee come up with a contingency plan. And there are actually two contingency plans. One is if there's a funding increase. Um, so the contingency plan in the case of an increase is that uh, if there's additional public service money available in the cap, that the additional funds um, would be distributed equally until an applicant is fully funded. So if they requested $7,000 and through that distribution they reach their max, then that's what they would get, their max request, and then the rest would be distributed amongst the others. Um, for planning and, and administration, um, it was recommended that the funding be prioritized for Project Sentinel. So any increase would first go to Project Sentinel. If there's any um, additional funds available in that cap, it would go to the City of Palo Alto for administration. Um, for economic development, um, and which is the Downtown Streets Project and the Opportunity Center Project, um, it was recommended that they they remain at the recommended funding levels because uh, the recommendation is for the um, the full amount that they've requested. And if there's any additional, if there are any additional funds available, um, 
in those in those categories that the funds be, will be allocated to the City of Palo Alto Minor Home Repair Program. Um, in the case of a funding de decrease, the recommendation was to for public services was to distribute any funding decrease proportionately among the uh, public service applicants, but maintain a minimum funding allocation of five thousand uh, dollars because we don't really want to make really small grants of less than five thousand um, dollars. For planning and administration, the recommendation is to maintain the funding allocation for Project Sentinel and any decrease in that category uh, is to be absorbed by the City of Palo Alto for administration. And for economic development, it was recommended that funding will be maintained for the Downtown Streets team. Um, for housing and public facilities rehabilitation, it was recommended that the funding will be maintained for the Opportunity Center project, and um, any reduction would would go to the uh, Minor Home Repair Program. So, um, so the actions that we are requesting today are to open the public hearing and take any public comment. Um, recommend the funding allocations for fiscal year 2018 and recommend a funding contingency plan for when the fiscal year 18 CDBG allocation is finalized. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions. When does the fiscal year begin? So it begins July 1, but as of now, what we're hearing from HUD is they have no idea when the allocation is going to be released. <laughs> Yeah, because typically we submit our our action plan with all of the the projects that we're you know we intend to carry out by May fifteenth. So it we're delayed this year, but that was per HUD direction because they they're hoping that we'll get the allocation soon. But at the same time, the drop dead deadline to submit the plan to HUD is in August. So. So we may not even know by then. We're, what I was told that it might not be until July that we find out what the allocation is. Any other questions from the commission? Jill? I do have commission some questions. Thank, <coughs> thank you, Chair Stinger. Um, I was wondering, Eloisa, if you could explain in the case of an increase, mm -hmm. then the um, applicant will reach the funding amount requested and any remaining funds will be distributed. So is that equally or is that pro rata? Um, so the, um, you see if that was a little difficult to explain. So um, if you look at the, the chart on the last page on the report, I don't know if you have the report available. Yeah, it's here. So this, this chart for public services lists the fiscal year 2018 request. And the thought was, um, say if there's an additional $10,000, uh, that it would be distributed proportionately amongst the, you know, the five um, applicants. However, if you look at a Silicon Valley Independent Living Center, they've requested $5,032. Uh, they're already recommended at five thousand, so they just need thirty-two dollars in order to to receive their full request. So the thought would be in that case, um, they would get an extra thirty-two dollars, and the rest of the funds would be distributed equally to the remaining four okay. until they reach their max. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was that yeah. was the thinking. Yeah. It's easier, I mean, it's it's sort of easier to go down than to go up in a way mm -hmm. to get the maximums. Yeah. Um, my other question was, I was intrigued by the minor repair program. Uh -huh. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you're envisioning with that? You know, who would be eligible for that and what kind of um, repairs and who and what kind of... Yeah, so, so, um, so we're, we're still um, trying to work out the details, but typically in minor home repair programs, uh, what we find is... Uh, 
the people who tend to qualify are senior citizens because they tend to be, you know, the same um, house rich and cash poor. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're envisioning is uh, minor repairs that, um, you know, maybe they need something repaired that's a health and safety issue. So I would think that would, you know, the way I envision it would be, that would be one of the priorities or if there is some accessibility upgrades like grab bars or a ramp or or things like that. That's kind of how we're, we're thinking. Like those would be the priorities for the repairs. So I know Avenidas mm -hmm. already has kind of a handyman program. Uh -huh. So are you going to collaborate with that or is this something that's beyond uh, the handyman so service? it's a little bit different than the handyman program because um if if i recall and you can correct me if i'm wrong i believe the handyman program does they do charge a fee mm -hmm. they do charge an hourly fee for the okay. for the work that they do so this in this program there would be no fee to okay. the the homeowner yeah Great. But in theory, if this goes out for RFP, Avenidas could bid on oh, it absolutely. and use the services absolutely. of their list. Yeah, absolutely. Members. Yeah, so we will do an RFP. So I, I will be reaching out to different organizations. Like there's Rebuilding Together. There's a, f mm -hmm. a few other Avenidas could certainly um, apply, and they will be on the RFP list. So oh, that sounds yeah. great. Any other questions from the commission? Well, just for the record, we'll open up the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have too many people. I don't know. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. There's a question. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just wanted to understand what Opportunity Center is about. Oh, uh, so the Opportunity Center is located on, um, I think, Encina, Encina, Encina Way, um, and it's. Um, they call it, it's a one-stop shop, so they do have, I think it's 89 units of um, housing for low-income um, residents, and they do provide other services for for anybody. You don't have to be a resident, so they provide, um, I think they provide food, they provide some medical services, counseling, um, clothing, I believe, mm -hmm. is there anything? Showers, yeah. So, so base some basic needs for people. Um, you know, mostly homeless or low income people. And uh, the facilities, um, want to say it's about ten years old. So they're requesting funds to repaint the exterior and also to replace the flooring um, inside. It is, uh, I would say, a, a high traffic area. There are people in and out of, of the place um, all the time. So so that is um, what the Opportunity Center is in a nutshell. I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, thank yeah. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any, any discussion on the first recommendation on funding allocations? I was just going to briefly say thank you so much, uh, Eluza, for teeing this up in the way that you did. And thanks to the organizations. I'm actually really relieved that I'm here because this would have been the fourth meeting that they attend yeah. uh, <laughs> before it even goes to the Finance Committee. Because actually, we had, we had even at a second subcommittee meeting, um, Downtown Street's team uh, showed up uh, again um, to explain to us yeah. the 19000 that they wanted, what, why they wanted it. Um, so I just want to say thank you again uh, and to the organizations if you're okay. watching. Well, I also want to say thank you to the selection committee members because I know that was a, a lot of work, a lot of reading that you did, a lot of analysis. So I really appreciate the time that you, you devoted to the allocation process. Thank you. It was interesting. Commissioner Onan? Um, and I wanted to say that although I'm, I'm very sad that La Comito had to withdraw for circumstances sort of beyond their control and beyond our control. I'm just really delighted that an alternative was rec has been recommended mm -hmm. that will help out with the community working group and the Opportunity Center. And I'm very intrigued about the minor home repair program too, which sounds like it's a real community need. So although La Comita wasn't able to take advantage of, of these funds, I'm glad that we found you know, a really good alternative. Thank you. 
I can just echo that, Commissioner Onan. Um, I was intrigued by it, and I think you elaborated a little bit more during our subcommittee meeting about it being a, a pilot program. I wanted yes. to yeah. see if we could fund more. And you very well stated that we will take steps to do it as a pilot, be successful, and know what we're doing, and then increase funding as appropriate. Mm -hmm. Can I have a recommendation on uh, the funding for fiscal year 218? Make a motion to, to approve the recommendation. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Uh, can we have a, any discussion on that? Can we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> aye. Yeah, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. Great. And then, Thank um, you, should there Thank be you. A, a change in the estimates? Is All there the a recommendation on the funding contingent, contingency? Uh, I motion to uh, make uh, the recommendation for funding contingency. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. I think our job is done until we hear from HUD. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, we talked a couple at our last meeting about a uh, proposal that Commissioner Alassani had put towards us. Did you want to give us an update? Sure. Um, so to quickly recap, at the last meeting, we had um, uh, given the approval to do um, uh, an event during the month of Ramadan, uh, an iftar event um, in uh, the uh, third or fourth week of June. Um, uh, and by the way, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this because it's happened t uh, <laughs> uh, today, but um, uh, uh, we, we started the, kind of spinning the wheels about how we were going to do this event and execute it. Um, we knew kind of from the beginning we were on a tight timeline. Um, so today um, I had a meeting with the Community Service uh, Department of the City um, and kind of after going back and forth about the idea, um, I think the city is ent enthusiastic about doing something, but um, uh, this felt a little rushed and not part of sort of a bigger picture plan. Um, and so after going back and forth, um, we kind of decided that if we're going to do this, we want to do it the right way um, and punting it to later in the fall and kind of having a plan about how to think about it the next fiscal year um, might be a better approach. Um, so that's kind of where, where we're at today. Uh, essentially. Mm -hmm. so it's postponed. Postponed. Yeah. Hopefully uh, so that we can do a better job of it uh, uh, in the fall. And, and also, um, so to be specific also, what I'd like to do is maybe um, have a discussion about this at our retreat uh, later in the summer. Then, then I would have a question about what about the um, extra funds that we need to spend before July 1st? Well, those are funds for my department. They're not specifically oh, okay, funds right. for the HRC. The HRC has spent their budget yeah, okay. four <laughs> times over <laughs> already, and we've been supplementing it with funds okay. just from, from our, the rest of our, our um, division. So, okay. so it, it wasn't funds, HRC funds. It was human services oh, okay. fund. Okay, so there's no chance of a visit to Tin Pot or anything. There is no chance. Tin Pot, that's it? That's, that's after dinner. <laughs> there's no chance of that, but I just want to commend Commissioner Alassani for his commitment um, to working on issues of um, inclusion and diversity. And I, for one, look forward to this conversation throughout the summer and our retreat so we can really say there's just so much this commission is going to do throughout the year and so many amazing things. And to be able to say, okay, let's do that event as part of this groupings 
of events. And I think as we looked at the calendar and as we met again this week and we said five weeks. That's really, that's really close. And we want to do it well. I think this commission has a history of amazing, well-planned, well-thought-out, well-attended events. And we know that there's a lot of work in the community to do in this. And I think what the commissioner wants to do next is just have it be part of a, a bigger plan. And we know Commissioner Alasani will be our, our lead on, on, on many of those. So I just wanted to commend him. I think, I think we, you know, there is some disappointment that we can't get it done, but I, I, I think in the end um, something richer will come out. Yeah, when we talked about uh, the community development block grant, the other s side of our service budget is his rep. We have a staff update. Well, first of all, I want to thank Chair Stinger and Chair um, Commissioner Onan, former Chair Onan, and um, for for our, our new commissioner, um, the Community Services Department, that's the department in which Mary and I are in for the Office of Human Services, we have a grant program for nonprofits in the community, and it's called the Human Services Resource Allocation Process. The acronym is HISREP, so that's what we, we always use. So it's a grant program, and it's about $450,000, and we have um, nonprofits in the community apply. So we had three commissioners uh, as part of that process, Commissioner Onan, Commissioner Gordon Gray and Commissioner Chen were part of a subcommittee to review the applications and make their recommendations. Something happened late in the process and one of the grantees withdrew their application and the subcommittee decided not to reallocate that money but to seek feedback from the, the council on that. So Commissioner Stinger and Onan were there on Tuesday night. I can tell you that um, we thought it was going to be discussed at 7.30 or 8, and it was discussed at 10.15. And um, so the discussion, so there, there was a, a fairly short discussion on it. The, in the end, they approved the HRC's recommendation to, to have that go forward to the council. Com, um, council Member Holman is still a, a big advocate for additional funds for for his rap, and she expressed that at the meeting. She was not able to, um, she didn't put forth a specific recommendation, but she was really um, hopeful that there would be additional funds for his rap. In the end, um, the, our department's budget is going forward to the full council. Commissioner, Council Member Holman voted against our budget because that allows her to be able to, to bring up her concerns when it goes to the full council. So it went forward with a 2-1 vote. One a council member had to leave the meeting early, so was not there for, for our discussion. So, um, so that is the update on that. They really didn't get into it. They did have a question that I um, was able to answer on why funding wasn't recommended for community working group. And I, I explained the situation with um, the, the two grants and the decision-making process of the subcommittee, but also if they went forward with the recommendation, the ability of that um, nonprofit to submit a grant proposal again. They did not give feedback, and that's something I need to look a little bit more, and they did not give feedback of any direction to the HRC when they open it up again to say, okay, we want it all to go to Cassie if they get the school district grant, or they want us to do this, or they want to do that. There was no feedback as far as that's concerned. That might come up when it goes to full council, or if it, you don't get that specific feedback, then, then it's really up to the HRC to have a deliberation about it and provide the recommendations back to the Finance Committee probably um, late summer, early fall. So that is the update on that. I also, as you... 
Of course. Um, Did you bring up the the, um, the idea of reissuing an RFP with the leftover funds? Yeah, that was part of the recommendation. So oh. that went forward. So that I was didn't hear that part when you were you, you mentioned that. I didn't hear you say that. I, I, I just because yeah. that recommendation was part of the community service okay. department's budget. So when they passed our budget to go forward, they passed that recommendation. Okay. So it's kind of implied, but I appreciate okay. you you asking that. Okay. So yes, those are recommendations. Um, your recommendations did go are now going forward to the full city council. There was also a um, colleague's memo from council members um, Fine, Holman, Koo, and Wolbach regarding a special three-year matching grant for youth community services. So that was discussed um, that night as well. But because it had just been referred the night before to the Finance Committee, there wasn't really a time to have LEAF come in and give a full presentation on it. So they did not make a decision about that. They, they sounded very favorable. So that um, discussion will happen at a later date. And when I know when that is, I will let you know. So they did not make a decision regarding that, but they, they seemed very, um, very favorable. So that is still um, yet to be decided. Another question. How did the council decide to um, choose youth services, I, youth community services? Youth community. Service. Right. So this was a colleague's memo. So this right. was by, I mean, by council they, member. Yeah. I do not I know the why background. They picked them in particular. I'm not sure how the the back conversations um, occurred. Whether it was just a knowledge of this special opportunity and looking at um, this local agency that would qualify for it. So mm -hmm. I don't have the the backstory on how that came to be. So that is really the update on the Finance Committee for from Tuesday night. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I was wondering, <clears throat> actually, I think you said that Councilmember Koo was one of the authors yes. of the college. So I don't know, Councilmember Koo, would you be able to tell well, us how YCS was? <laughs> I'm not to put you on the spot the second you walked in. But. No, that's okay. Um, thank you. So uh, actually, uh, Councilmember Karen Holman was the one who authored it, and then um, and there's three of us that signed on to it. But it was also an opportunity that was offered by um, Supervisor Simidian. Uh, it was going to be um, matched by the county. So it was an opportunity that th we didn't want to kind of have go by since they're matching uh, the other half of the funds. And YCS. The county that them, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Any other questions, comments? So just one more thing. So when it's our budget hearing night, I will let you know. So if anybody wants to come along, I will, I will I'll let you know. I'm bringing snacks and a laptop next time. Yeah. But um, I did want to, <laughs> in a pillow, and I did want to mention that um, I know that we had kind of wondered whether we would get any guidance on what kind of of agency might be eligible for the unallocated funds that are now left on the table because of ACS's withdrawal from the his route process. Uh, but was what was interesting to me was I think there was interest in, in having the the replacement agency have at least an opportunity to apply. But Councilmember Fine was also very uh, interested in possibly funding community working group and was glad to hear that they would also be able to apply in the second round of our RFP process. So I don't know that we got the guidance that we were looking for because I think different council members maybe have different issues on the top of their minds or different priorities. So uh, the the second RFP process may really be very much up to us, uh, but, but then again, we may hear something different when we go before the full council. So I think we should all sort of keep our seatbelts on and you know kind of see where this ride takes us. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, a recap of the Being Different Together series. I wanted to spend some time on this today, and I'm going to just read some notes, but I'll ask you to... Pass you down? Yeah. Since this was the last of the forms, and we won't be um, 
since this was the last of the forms, I just wanted to take some time first to do some thank yous. Uh, Shelley and uh, Commissioner Gordon Gray and Commissioner Chen were very helpful as we uh, working the registration. Minka and Mary just did so much to make these events uh, hospitable. I really appreciate it. You helped us out with registration, Commissioner Onan. So thank you to everybody. We had uh, several objectives going into the last forum. Um, they were to foster difficult conversations, practice how to be allies, have a discussion, use some role plays, and understand the tools and concepts behind being an upstander and a bystander. And I wanted to share those because I wanted to document that we had serious intent when we went into planning for the fourth forum. But a kind of a funny thing happened. While we were sitting at these tables and solving the problems of the world, we, we had some fun. We had discussion. And for a short period of time, this room was the place to be, to hear stories, and to reach across the table. And that was our um, original intent when we started. But we forgot about it as we got more serious. And it was just really f delightful to see people enjoying the company of p new people they had met. And I'll share, for example, that I sat with a woman at my table who I've seen at uh, numerous public hearings to the point where I can almost tell which story she's going <laughs> to tell. But I never knew her name or got to know her as a person. And it just, the relationship took on more, uh, more depth, and that was just delightful. So there had always been that hope that the relations would be developed and the other would become neighbor and that the community would become richer. And I think we achieved that during the four, four series, four forms in the series. There were some lessons, and these are the sheets that I uh, distributed to you or asked to be copied. There were some phrases that we used or that we heard a year ago in uh, the first forum. Be an upstander, not a bystander. Practice cultural humility. Listen deeply enough to be changed. Remain openly curious. Be vulnerable. Engage. Be a community in practice. Miracles happen. Lead from where you are. If your cup is already full, how can you learn? And courageously look into the mirror of introspection. And I think during the series of four forums, we added some phrases this year that we might want to work at. One was, could I do that? And this was something Dr. Brown emphasized. When we're role playing in a safe place, he might say, well, I don't know if I could really do that in the real world. And his sentence was, at some point, you got to get beyond the academics and mm -hmm. take your first step. Have something that you want to say and practice it. And just, yes, you can do it. He encouraged us to tolerate discomfort. And when we were at the beginning of this out process talking about creating a safe place, he said, no, we really don't want a safe place. We want a brave place. We want people to be upstanders and take that step. And then finally, he told us to presume good intent and start a conversation, a dialogue from a positive rather than a, a confrontational standpoint. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the takeaways that um, were important to me, and I heard them echoed from other people in the community. I just wanted to share a little bit of a closing story that he sh shared with us, or his message, not his story, because it reinforced accepting identity. He ended with a very s emotional sentence. He said, our goal is not to become or develop a language of a race-free or a color-free society. Our journey is to be proud of who we are and who we're traveling with. And when, as he said that, that kind of took us back full circle to where we started. We started Forum 1 with an identity exercise, and we moved on to difficult conversations and microaggressions. And then through our fourth forum, we came back to where we are to be proud of who we are. And um, I was really very appreciative of the of everybody who contributed, the uh, subcommittee from the commission, the staff, and um, the community. And that's my report out. I'm open to questions or comments from people who were there. I think before anybody comments, I think we all owe
Commissioner Stinger, a big round of applause. This was, there was everyone, you know, around the table helped out, but this was an event that was her heart and her soul, and she put both into it, and the outcome was evident of that love and careful attention. So thank you. Well, I'll share that. I had kind of a unique role at the last forum because I was helping to check people in. So I was sort of not participating directly, but I was eavesdropping and then helping people get situated. And I saw so much diversity in the room, people of all ages, ethnicities, people were there with their significant others, uh, people brought their children because they just felt it was so important that they share in this community event. And I heard over and over that uh, people say that I, I went to one of the earlier ones and I was so looking forward to this one because it just seemed like it built this momentum and became a very, very important um, investment for people that they just wanted to get the most out of this experience and it was it was like it was their favorite activity, you know, when they when they couldn't wait to, to get to close the circle and come back for the, uh, the final session. So there was just a lot of enthusiasm and it was a brutal, horrible night with the rain and I wondered, you know, was anyone going to, because when we first, when I first arrived, the room was a bit sparse, and then people just started pouring in with their umbrellas, <laughs> and they came out in all that weather because it was that important to them, so I was just, again, wanted to affirm that I thought it was a very successful event. Thank you. one activity that we undertook this year and we'll go move on to an update and discussion of the work plans and i wanted to um, frame this a little bit partly so we could recap and capture where we are and partly to introduce our activities for the past year to you polly um, we are a, a commission that meets once a month but most of our work is done in committee work and I, I said to staff as I was coming in, it struck me when I was looking at this as a commission. We work cooperatively. We work in subcommittees on a mission. We worked a lot this year on a mission statement, which is on the agenda. And we took it very seriously. Um, maybe we'll spend an hour or two here tonight, but we spend a lot of time working behind the scenes on committees. And some of the committees we've had, um, this year have been continuations of priorities from a previous year. So we're kind of closing down on an immigrant learning series that uh, Commissioner Chen has run. We're, we've done an allies and immigrant series that uh, I guess former commissioners Savage and uh, Stone worked on very effectively. We've worked on the being different together for two years. And we've worked on the homeless vets that uh, Commissioner Alassani and Commissioner Stone worked on. So when I started this list, I thought there were activities that we were still continuing from the previous year, but it seems like we've come full circle on those activities. And we've started some new priorities this year, and I'm going to ask people to speak to where we are. One activity is elder abuse. Can you speak to that? Yes, yeah, so I've been concerned for some time about the rise of, of elder abuse in Santa Clara County. And it's been, uh, uh, it, it corresponds to the rise in um, housing costs and also in the growth of the senior population, especially here in the North County. And uh, it's really a, a very misunderstood and, and little understood epidemic. Uh, Georgia Basile, who runs the Senior Legal Assistance Program here in Palo Alto, has, has mentioned it. She's increasingly seeing Palo Alto residents who need legal services to prevent uh, physical, financial, and even sexual abuse from family members, caregivers, um, uh, friends, w what have you, uh, in their homes. And um, I see here at places that okay. we... <laughs> that there is a World of uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Day coming up in San Jose. So I'd love for Palo Alto to um, focus on that. I think we've had a little bit of trouble finding a partner uh, event or agency to work with us. 
Um, we originally thought of going to Avenidas, and their caregiver conference isn't the right venue, we learned. Avenidas, um, we speculated a bit that we may have a, a, um, like a summit on aging and include elder abuse as part of that, but because Avenidas is in the process of moving temporarily while they build their new facility, they're sort of not in the right time and place to try to host this type of summit or conference. So it's kind of on the back burner from Avenidas' perspective. We also thought of partnering with um, the YMCA's um, annual health fair, which will be in September. We've had a little trouble kind of connecting with their chair and co-chair and really getting involved in that. It's, there's been sort of some communication issues and timing and scheduling issues. So I'm not sure how to proceed. I still would really like us to do something. I don't know if we, if, if it would be helpful for me possibly to attend this event in San Jose and then see if we can do uh, a similar type of, or in scale it down for a local event here. Right. I just wanted to interject if you're having trouble getting hold of the why. I mean, that event has kind of it was spearheaded by the Y, and last year they did it in collaboration with the city. And I know a lot of planning happened for that within the city's Healthy Cities, Healthy Communities group. So I will look who on the city end is the, the, the co-chair for that event and have them give you a call because I really do think that would be might be a venue to consider because so then it's nestled under another event instead of being its its own event so but it gives you the opportunity to um, to talk to them so let me see if the city is in, is involved as it was last year and I believe so and give you our person and maybe they can make some headway for you but I think that would be really helpful Minka and I do think that possibly uh, participating in the world event down in San Jose would be really um, illuminating for us and then it could give us some takeaways to bring back here to North County because it, these events in San Jose typically don't attract people as from as far away as Palo Alto so we'd sort of I think part of our mission is to kind of bring some of those county resources to, to our own neighborhoods. Yeah, I'd be really interested in what they're doing on World Elder Abuse Day. I think that would be a, uh, a good venue for a group of us to go down if we could. Another uh, priority we had for this year was to do a workers' well-being workshop or communication. And that was something that was spearheaded by Gre uh, Commissioner Stone, who is moved on to other commissions. Um, we had an objective from him to ensure that service workers in Palo Alto obtain information on services within the city, their workers' rights, and to make sure they know that they work in a community that value, which values them. It was intended to be um, educational and um, positive in its tone, but we need a chair. We need a committee, actually. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if we want to, maybe what we should do is uh, take that to the retreat and have, uh, when we set our priorities for the year, when we set our activities, supporting activities, then everybody will see a full array and be able to uh, fill their schedule. Okay, so that's one that's on hold. The other thing that we did this year, and this was um, spearheaded a lot by staff, was our mental health learning series. We've had, um, besides the committee work and the forums we do in the community, we bring speakers into uh, the commission. And we've had a series of mental health learning uh, speakers this year. And then... Um, Besides the priorities we had from a previous year, besides the new priorities, we added um, one priority and that one committee, and that was a uh, committee to look at the council resolution on inclusion and a safe community. And we, the subcommittee, met this week, and we're starting on a fact-finding uh, effort to um, 
see what kinds of materials we need to look at. If there's a program we can use um, an intern to help, a summer intern to help us with. And um, we'll frame that a little bit and bring that to the retreat as well. Any other activities people want to speak to? One time we had talked about a human trafficking event, but I guess are we, is that off the table? I yeah, Commissioner um, Savage was in touch with um, former um, Police Chief Burns, and after a conversation with him, did not feel that that rose to the level of a big enough issue in Palo Alto for the HRC to have a, a specialized forum on it in looking at some of the other issues the HRC could work on. They, um, Commissioner Savage really came to the conclusion that we should focus on, on something else. So. Um, Chair Stinger, so another um, event that, that we had tossed around was doing a mental health related event and that would correspond very nicely with the mental health speakers series that we had. Um, and again, um, I think we were, I was sort of um, interested in both the elder abuse and the mental health event so I think I spread myself a little bit too thin. But um, I have kind of been rethinking that and I I think what I learned from our series on mental health was, you know, it's a very difficult topic and it can be, uh, you know, very fraught and people in the community can get very frightened around whether their child has a mental health issue or there's a homeless person in their neighborhood with a mental health issue. And I wonder if we might want to reframe this, and this maybe also is something we could talk about this summer or, or at the retreat, into maybe a mental resilience event. Like how can we make ourselves mental wellness? I mean, how can we make ourselves more resilient, more happy? I mean, life is not perfect and we all have challenges and burdens, but what can we do to make the most of what we have and become strong, you know, people who can stand up to adversity. That might be something that's more affirming for the community instead of a fear-based, you know, or negative kind of oriented event. And I'm really I'm really interested in the whole issue of resilience and I think it's something that you know, there's Stanford psychologists and doctors who work on on these issues and how can we make our children more resilient and even how we as adults, how can we be more resilient? We might even be able to partner with some of our agencies like CARA that does you know, grief counseling and helps people get back to, from away from a dark place, back into a happier, you know, frame of mind. So I'm kind of interested in tossing that idea around. And if we cannot get the elder abuse event to work out with the wise health fair, maybe a mental health or mental wellness event might fold into the wise health fair even even better. So I'm kind of open to a lot of different possibilities and, can, and we'll have more time over the summer to work on them in preparation for the fall health fair. I didn't forget the mental health um, forums. I was just being sensitive to how much you were taking <laughs> on and was focusing on the elder abuse. But I think that's a, a wonderful idea. I like it because it's positive. We spend a lot of time talking about how to um, deal with negative situations, but how to avoid or how to come back to a, posit uh, a plateau, a, a good place, would be a real contribution. So if you want to sign up for that, we'll follow. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to talk more about kind of which or both of these events, <clears throat> how to pursue them and in what forum and time frames. Um, but again, I think over the summer I'll have more time and energy to kind of invest in this. And, and I would love to have either one or both showcased at the health fair because I think they're both very relevant issues. One is a, a difficult topic that I think people need to be more aware of. And the other I think is a more affirming topic that I think could also be very beneficial to the community. I think if we might for, because I, I like that frame as well, I think in developing that, you might consider or staff can provide you some resources that people that work on the mental health events so that while we're working on issues of resilience, we're not downplaying that for, for some, it's not a, a willing to get better. It's, you know, a, a physical ability not to get better due to a mental health condition. So being able to frame the positive and frame the resilience, but, but not, not discounting 
the, the real mental health concerns that some people find themselves in. I think I just don't want to frame it in a way of, you know, let's pick ourselves up, let's be resilient, when for some all the picking themselves up is just not their ability right now. So how do, how do those... How do, how, do, how do those go together while affirming the one but not discounting the other? Would yeah. just be some feedback that I would have. Yes, no, I, and I think that's a really fair point. But I think there is, um, and I think what I learned from last year's adolescent um, mental health conference was that there's a real spectrum. And there are people who have very serious mental illness that basically detaches them from reality. They need serious interventions, and the earlier the better. And then there are also people who have much more mild forms of mental illness. But the truth is that all of us, if we are lucky enough to live long enough, we will lose people that we love. We will experience loss, and we will experience some sort of disaster, whether you have a, ch a parent die or you're in a car accident or you don't get into the school that you want to get into. I mean, everybody faces these kinds of things, even here in, in like lovely Palo Alto. So I think that uh, a wellness event, of course, can't address things like serious mental illness and, and maybe even some less severe forms. They need to be addressed medically and that, and we understand that. But I think there are you know, resilience techniques that parents can learn and even their children can learn just to get through the everyday sort of more minor tragedies that can sometimes really bring people down and help them start to spiral into things that maybe they could pull themselves out of if they had the mental wellness tools to do so. So that's where we, I think we want to focus. And I would never pretend to that happy thoughts are going to cure, you know, serious mental health issues. But I, I do think that a lot of the teenage anxiety and depression that I see around me is partly self-created. The kids compare themselves to their peers and feel bad about themselves. You know, a lot, there's a, a you know, in Palo Alto, there, a, a study showed that the kids were confident and happy and secure about themselves until about the time they hit high school. And suddenly their self-esteem just plummets. And why is that? So I think a lot of it is the competition. Am I thin enough? Am I smart enough? Am I, you know, athletic enough? And the kids start to compare themselves and tear themselves down. So maybe this is, you know, this is a place where you can self-intervene and say, hey, I need to stop beating myself up all the time and, and learn to accept who I am and accept my gifts and accept my shortcomings and, you know, learn to cope with situations better. So that, I think, is a sort of like mental wellness training that even young people could learn and might be very beneficial to them. At any rate, I'd love to explore the possibility. Second, thank you. <laughs> that would be great. So I think that's an update on our work plan items. Um, reports from officials, commissioner reports. Anybody have? Um, I'll share that I, um, I don't know how official this is, but I, I ran into um, <laughs> our, 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 one of our council members, Liz Niz at Pete's, my favorite second home. And um, she thanked us for the letter that um, our former, our, our former colleague, Greer Stone, presented at City Council and asked that um, all council members be given a copy of that letter. And uh, I've taken care touched. of that. Yeah, and thank you, Minka. <laughs> so it was just, it was lovely to kind of have that informal uh, FaceTime with one of our council members and get some nice feedback on that. Right. So I, I checked with the clerk's office today because I wasn't sure if um, former Commissioner Stone gave a copy of the letter at places, and he hadn't, so I gave a copy of the letter, and the clerk's office will... Um, we got it. There we go. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Hey, can I ask a question? Um, yes. Uh, are we uh, putting on the agenda, or maybe, we can, maybe this is for later in the meeting, but the issue that I raised um, about the letter, that councilwoman... Councilmember uh, Wolbach's concern. That that's being um, handled by the subcommittee that Valerie reported on. Mm -hmm. So that sub that's the subcommittee in response to the council resolution um, on a safe and inclusive community. So that subcommittee has already met and is going to be working on it with the hope of some bringing something back to the council in um, early fall. 
Okay. How we um, am I, has somebody communicate that to him or could you come right for you to do it? You are let let me let me check on protocol, but and I'll I'll let you okay. know. I just want to make sure it, be responsive. To right, the but that's yeah, that's if just to be a little clear that yeah. that was the safe okay. and inclusive communities. That is the subcommittee that has been um, that 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 has met and will be working very specifically on that and bringing um, those findings back to this group, refining them before it goes on to the council. Please, councilman. How many um, subcommittees do you guys have right now? Just kind well, of. Well, we have we have <laughs> ad hoc subcommittees because they're not ongoing subcommittees. So we had, you know, an ad hoc. So each of the the events that we plan is like an ad hoc subcommittee. So um, so th that's all the events we did this year plus his ramp. So at this point, the active. CDBG was an ad hoc subcommittee. So at this point, the active ones, I would say, would be the elder abuse, the, um, council the council resolution, and I think those are the two at this point. I would see then when the retreat comes, we will have different, um, whatever our work plan is, then we have a ad hoc subcommittee that works on that because it's short in nature when that event is over, that subcommittee kind of dissolves and then they, they come together. Thank you. So that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, yeah, but in the last year, you know, it was the ad hoc subcommittee on the Veterans Summit on being different together on the domestic violence um, form that the HRC has done. I have a few things to comment on. One is uh, there's a Healthy City initiative in, the, uh, in Palo Alto that we've talked about, and uh, I'm a liaison from the HRC to that group, and they're working on um, metrics so that they can be more specific on where they're starting and measuring the outcomes of any res proposals that they make. And uh, I think very wisely the group that met decided to focus on healthy culture. There are four elements in the Healthy Cities Initiative, culture, environment, workplace, and food access. And it started to become overwhelming. And the real reality was that uh, there'd be metrics and measurements coming out of people's years and proposals and activities, but none of them would be able to really have the focus they deserved. And if they focused on uh, healthy culture, which covers quite a lot, cultures, seniors, mental health, the unhoused, youth, people with disabilities. That would be a, a huge contribution just to step forward in that one area. So that was one thing I attended. I attended the May Fet Parade, which Yay. was great fun. I love it. And um, Minka and Mary attended employee recognition yesterday, the, the program the city put on. I don't know if you got a 20-year pin. I didn't get any. They, they, I think they separated the <coughs> recognition of years of service from the annual employee recognition event. So I'm not sure when that's coming, but not sure if we're getting a pin or we'll see. We'll see. Just wanted to add our recognition to our staff because I think you Council liaison report. Can you, Councilperson Koo? I don't have any, but congratulations to Count, uh, Commissioner Al Hassani and also to uh, Con Commissioner Depali, Depa right? Well, welcome to the group. <laughs> The only thing I had to report is that I will be um, writing a resolution in honor of Commissioners um, Stone and Savage, and those will go um, before the council probably late summer, early fall, as far as when there was room on the agenda, the, the council is really impacted before it goes on summer break. So I will be working on those. I will let you know when that happens. Uh, 
on June 8th. Mary has nicely listed two items, the uh, election and a discussion of our retreat. Anything else? Well, okay, at the risk of continuing to get my fingers in too many pies, um, I'm still really interested in pursuing the opportunity to have Palo Alto declared a, a gender equal city. There was a speaker who, who presented to us a few months ago saying that because the Equal Rights Amendment never passed at the federal level, it's really up to individual local governments and state governments to pass this. And she gave us some information, which I still have, and it's relatively easy to, to have your city declared a place where um, there are equal rights for both genders, or I guess maybe we should be for indeterminate gender as yeah. well. Yeah, okay. yeah. But um, I, I really think it would be interesting and, and to do that for Palo Alto, because we're a very progressive city, and I think it's it's very always very shocking to me that I live in a country where women don't officially have equal rights with men. Would you like to have the, uh, the speaker spoke to us during um, oral communications, so they had three minutes. Would you like to invite them back? I would. I think we'd have to just talk offline, you know, the, you know, if, if it's just with the intention of of listening to them, or is it the intention of of taking any action or recommending that on to council, or or what what is your thinking at this point? Well, my understanding is there were some steps that had to be done, and it's in the, much much of the information was in the brochure that we were given. I, I would have to read it again to refresh my memory, but um, it wasn't a lengthy or difficult process. But it's something we would have to kind of spearhead and then I think take to council and explain why we want that declaration to be made. Perhaps you can hear a presentation and if there's maybe a desire by the, the commission to refer that to the subcommittee working on uh, a safe and inclusive mm. community because really the, the purpose of that subcommittee is to look at um, any possible policy recommendations on to the council as it refers to the items that are included in the resolution. So maybe if you want to listen to them and then the more deliberation about that could happen with that uh, that subcommittee in the context of all the work that they're doing. Yeah, I think that would be a really great idea. Okay. Because I was um, very proud that Palo Alto be, is becoming known as an um, officially as an age-friendly city by the World Health Organization. And I think it would be so cool if we were also a uh, a gender equality city. Yes, and our age-friendly approval came through. I should have listed that. I heard from the World, World Health Organization last week. I should have written that down, but our application is in and it's been approved. Well, I was very impressed by the two speakers as well, and th we had included gender the, I think it's CEDAW, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is one of the elements to look at in terms of fact-finding. And if, if it suits the commission, we could invite those two women to would, uh, do a presentation. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Do you have that agenda? I you know, think the, the only other thing that I, I put down here is, you know, if there's anyone for mental health or immigrant voices, those were the only series that we, we had going this year, and we've kind of, um, you, you had listed more that they were in conclusion, but when I was just thinking of agenda items, I didn't know if that was something you wanted to continue hearing about or, um, or to take a break on, on those. That on the immigrant experience? Uh, either. Oh. either we, we have typically throughout this year, each meeting we've had some kind of speaker. And those speakers have referred to either the Immigrant Voices series or the Mental Health series. Kind of been a little derailed with CBG and his rap the last couple months. So the question that 
I had is do we want to continue taking a break from that during the summer and then as you meet again at your retreat you can rethink okay what what is an idea for our learning series for next year do we want to continue one of these do we want to start with something else so we can continue to take a break and then staff will go from the the council of the HRC once you've had your retreat but I just wanted to to bring it in bring it up to check in with you well I did have a suggestion um, because we we may or we are will likely be having some kind of elder abuse event this year it maybe would be helpful to ask Georgia Basile of Sala to come in and speak to us about her experience with clients who are experiencing elder abuse here in our community and how widespread it is and, and the trends that she's seeing um, we can and then I will also plan to go to the um, World Elder Abuse Awareness event in San Jose, and then perhaps we can start to put all of that together, and then see what how that would shape our local event. Okay. So, I think we could probably do justice to one speaker. Do you want to prioritize uh, Sala or? Um, I would say I'd be interested in hearing from either one, and since there are people maybe taking vacations and such this summer, maybe reach out and, if Plan possible, do months. one in June and one in July okay. if we can. I don't want, to, but I don't want to presume, Chair. Just it's just a suggestion for me. No, I wanted to spread out the responsibility. <laughs> um, the other idea that you mentioned was um, mental health resilience and having somebody from CARA, perhaps. Speak. What about somebody from Stanford speaking on pop, positive psychology? That's a pretty hot topic there. and it's, There's a lot of research going on, and I know I have friends who are doing workshops. They're, there's you know, experimental workshops in this area. So. Yeah, I wonder if, if, if we do that, if there could be maybe some um, pre-work done by Commissioner Onan to try to get a sense of a little bit more framing and a little bit like oh who are the players in that and I would hate to like just invite one person that ends up not being part of the the framing of how um, the HRC might want to proceed with that event so that would be my that would be my only caution mm -hmm. in that because that's pretty wide and diverse I had one thought when you were talking about resilience that uh, I'll test with you, Depo uh, Commissioner Bum. No, you but can call me <laughs> Can I? <laughs> <laughs> the protocol is that we call you by your last name. I think the commissioners are would just love to learn how to pronounce your last name correctly. Yeah, it's uh, Brumbert. Brumbert. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll work on that. It's taken me over a year to get used to using commissioner last name so I want to I want to keep on practicing I'm very taken by your suggestion of looking at uh, digital or online bullying or interference mm -hmm. and I also I wonder if there's a way to look at a positive look at that in terms of resilience how you avoid getting into negative situations in an online setting. So yeah. I don't know if we could task you with looking at some local speakers who might do a learning, who might come and speak to us. Yeah, sure, I could take that. That is very close to my heart. I, I mean, when I heard uh, yeah. you talking about that, I wanted to, you know, volunteer that I can help as well, but I was trying to hold myself <laughs> <laughs> back and, you know, just take it easy the first meeting. <laughs> But but yeah, it is it is something very close to my heart, and um, I would very much uh, like to investigate and research on that and uh, give a report back to you. All. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. It'll be something we can uh, use at the retreat. So, so when is the retreat? Well, that's the next question. Yeah, Should we? Yeah, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. We Since. we we have it on the agenda to talk about next time. Usually, it's in August instead of an August meeting. It's like a one day thing? It's like a half day thing. Okay, okay.
Anything else? Any closing comments? Do I hear a motion? <laughs> Can we go home? <laughs> I think you're allowed to adjourn us. Adjourned. <laughs> Yay.